Hi, I'm James Owls. I'm the Motorsport Strategy Director for the team, and I'm here to answer your questions about the British Grand Prix. I'm glad you asked how Toto's pulse was during the race. Often we're interested as well, which is why here you can actually see what his pulse was. Beginning of the race, then leading up to that lap four, you can see his pulse quickens and goes up to near maximum. Then once it all settles down a little bit more, just down into a, a gentle rise as we go through up and towards the stop. On a serious note, that's not Toto's pulse, but the reality behind it is it's incredibly exciting watching our two drivers race each other. I've said this previously, but it's very difficult for us. You have two drivers that are consummate professionals fighting within millimeters of each other, and both were fantastic. Lewis did a great pass from Valtteri. Valtteri did exactly the right thing, which is to fight back immediately and retake that position. They were adjusting the steering wheel energy management corner by corner in order to extract everything they could from the car. And ultimately, fantastic to watch two professionals fight themselves that way. After we stopped Valtteri, we left Lewis out. And the intention was to allow Lewis to have a slight tire offset to maximize his chances of fighting cleanly with Valtteri for the win. Both drivers are presented opportunities to win the race. And in Lewis's case, as long as his lap times were strong, we were going to keep him there. We could only have realistically done one, maybe maximum two more laps before the safety car had come out. He already, his lap times were starting to drop a little bit and he was starting to lose too much time relative to Valtteri. He had a small tire offset, not enough to be able to overtake on track, but it may have been enough on a two-stop race by the final stint. As many of you know, Silverstone was relayed again this year. The tarmac was pulled up down to the bare surface of the old airfield and relayed. That was also done just one year ago, but there were a few issues with it. And the reality is the job they've done this year was perfect. The track surface was very, very smooth throughout. It was extremely grippy. In fact, more so grippier than we had expected. Going into the event, we have to choose an allocation of tires. And that's done about eight weeks ago. And eight weeks ago, we believed that based on information from last year, how the track was, we would not need the hard tire. Something changed this year. After, in fact, the Paul Ricard Grand Prix, the French Grand Prix, we learned actually the hard tire on a surface like that may prove to be very useful, but it's too late. We can't change our tire allocation. And the same applied to Ferrari and Red Bull as well. All three of us went into the race weekend without any hard tires. And as it turns out, that proved to be fairly costly you need the information on a tire that you may spend a lot of the race on. And as you saw, most teams migrated towards a one-stop medium hard. So when you get a change in surface, it creates unpredictability. A lot of the data you have from the year prior, you really have to throw out to a certain extent and start from scratch. What happened now? Great surface, great track, great racing as you saw, and the tires were working perfectly on it. Going into the race, we had very much a two-stop at the front and center of our plan. So did Ferrari and so did Red Bull. A one stop was there, we knew it existed, we knew it was very much possible, but you would be taking some risks doing it and it wasn't the primary strategy as a result of it. It was a little bit slow on race time, but obviously the two stop you would have to fight through traffic. In terms of where we were, it also meant running the hard tire for a long period of time, a tire that in free practice we hadn't touched. On lap 16 of the race, by then, already Red Bull had stopped both of their cars and Ferrari had stopped one of theirs and all had gone to the medium except for Gasly that was on that hard tire. With Valtteri, we were very much in that two-stop window. His lap times had just started to stabilize, maybe drop a little bit. And the decision was to go with the fastest race that we believed was possible at that time, which was a two-stop medium, medium hard, very similar to our competitors. And that's why we fitted the medium. It was the fastest race overall. We'd highlighted in the morning that with one of our two cars, we would take the hard tire. A couple of reasons. First is it does create an opportunity for a one-stop race should other circumstance come up. Second of all, a little bit more like Bahrain 2014, you create an opportunity for both of our cars to race each other throughout the race. So Lewis would have come out behind Valtteri without the safety car on the hard tire. And I think it would have been an incredibly exciting race from then onwards to see who had the chance to win. We didn't stop Valtteri under the safety car because he was behind Vettel on track. Both cars would have come in, both cars would have fit in hard, and really that would have probably cemented Valtteri's position to the end of the race in all reality. We felt that given that the mediums were only four laps old, given that the car was performing extremely well, that two-stop strategy for him gave him the best chance overall to get back into a P2 position. We truthfully have no idea at all how Lewis did the fastest lap of the race on 32 lap old hard tires. Hardest tire available, completely used up, and yet he does a fantastic lap at the end. Well done to him, no idea.
because we weren't expecting him to do that fastest lap on the race on 32 lap old hard tires, we'd actually planned for him to do an extra pit stop towards the end. It was a free pit stop. Valtteri behind had to stop anyway. He'd only run mediums to that point, so had to complete the requirement for the race of wanting another compound. And with Lewis, we very much called him in with the intention of that, giving him a fresh set of tires and going for fastest lap. He was very comfortable with how his tires were behaving, however, which is why ultimately we left him out. And as you saw, he did the fastest lap irrespective. Thank you very, very much for all of your questions. We really do enjoy answering them and providing a little bit of insight from the team, especially about a race such as the British Grand Prix. What a fantastic event it was. A great race throughout and a fantastic result for ourselves. We now look forward to answering your questions for the German Grand Prix.